In this video, I'm going to talk about the Tin Canny Learn Dash reporting plugin that we recently released. Now, the plugin can be used for both Learn Dash reporting as well as both collecting, storing, and reporting on data related to Tin Can statements. So, if you are authoring content with uh, Articulate Storyline, with Adobe Captivate, or with H5P, then we're able to inter intercept the uh, Tin Can statements that are coming from those modules capture them inside your WordPress database and then report on them. So it collects all the information and then we combine it together for a unified view of learning activity on your Learn Dash site. So right now I'm signed into a test site. There is some test data there. And when you first sign in as an administrator, you would see this dashboard page. And this is where we have kind of the, the high level reporting view of uh, the plugin. So right now, this is, I'm showing uh, version 1.0 of the plugin. So if you're looking at this at a later date, you'll probably see a number of other modules here for uh, reporting. But what I am seeing here is the total number of courses on the site, the total number of users. You can see, again, it is a test site. We did test with uh, a pretty large number of users. Um, over here, we've got a, a graph that shows uh, the recent activities. Uh, the course completion scale here, it's got the axis over on the left side. So you can see the number of course completions is relatively low uh, versus, of course, the tin can statements, which we were really tracking uh, in this test site, which you can see are quite high. We have, uh, I think, just under 40,000 tin can statements there. So for all of the, the charts that are on the site, um, instead of a date range, just in case any of this is confusing, you can just drag the sliders across um, to, to narrow the, the date range if you want to see specific dates. And of course, you can hover over anything and uh, see the details for any of these. And you can see the scale for those and, and how that works. So let's go into the actual report details now. We'll start off with the course report. So I if I click on view report here, now one thing to keep in mind with this plugin is that it can be relatively resource intensive. Um, in this instance, we have 10,000 users on the site uh, with some data for those users. And the more users and the more data that's on there, um, the report generation can take longer. So we've tried to optimize things as much as we can, but given that it is still WordPress and not really designed for this kind of thing, it tends to suit smaller sites better with like a couple hundred, couple thousand users. So at the top here, we have the same chart that we saw previously on the dashboard page. And then beneath that, we have a list of courses. And then within those courses, we have uh, data on enrollment and completion. So here we have the 10 courses that are on this specific site. And you can see there's data for the number of people enrolled, how many people within that have not started the course, how many have the course in progress, and how many users have completed the course. Uh, the next column is for average quiz score. So what we did here was look at all of the Learn Dash quizzes within the course and weighted them equally and took a simple average of them. So that's showing the, uh, the value there if anyone has completed the quiz. Uh, this is the average completion time for the course. So we are tracking time with the um, pro modules for the Uncanny Learn Dash Toolkit. So if that's installed and it's tracking time, then we do track average completion time for this particular course. Um, and then here we can show the percent of users that have completed the course. For all of these columns, of course, everything can be sorted. So we can just click any of these things to sort however we want. It's all instant, they're all uh, JavaScript charts. So here, if we wanted it by uh, course, you can see it's organized by course here. Um, and then you can search within this too. So if I wanted, we don't really have any duplicates. Actually, I could use management. So anything with management in it would be filtered then. And it's instant, so we can do that. Now, let's suppose we want to drill down a little further and get more information about, let's go with uh, this Leadership 101 course. So this is my Leadership 101 page. And here we can see, again, basic details about the course. So how many people are enrolled, average completion time, average quiz score again. It's also um, shown the completion in a chart down here. Um, and then again, this is kind of a small 
set of numbers again because it's only um, it's only a few people that have done this in the test site site but again like for any of these things you can use these uh, these filters and the date ranges to uh, to kind of refine the view of the data so let's take a look now um, it's got a list of users that are enrolled in this course and if the user has completed it then we would have a completion date here and of course everyone's going to have the percent complete um, in this case, it's 34% uh, it's for this user who has not completed it. Um, and then the completion time. So this one's not the average. You can see the, the average is up here, which again is taking those three values into account and uh, taking the average of those. So um, again, for if you have a lot of users in here, you can do a search for anything like that. Um, you can filter if it's a couple hundred users. That can be helpful if you want to refine data. Um, or if you even wanted to search by email address, like I just want to see people with the, that's not going to help there. So I can see those two users with, um, with that in the email address and I could uh, filter that way. So beyond that, if I wanted to drill down further into one of these users, let's take a look at Arthur Jones, who looks like he's been pretty active. So what we've done now, it, it was pretty subtle, but we did change tabs there because we drilled down into it. So now we've moved to the user report. Um, and if I went back up, then I would see a list of all users that are enrolled um, or that are in the system. So I could see um, what they're doing. But uh, we clicked on the user from the course page. So we've gone into this, uh, this user's details. So we can see that uh, this particular user um, is enrolled in six courses and has completed all six of them. And here is the list of the six courses that he is enrolled in. And again, it's got, uh, if there have been quizzes, it's got the average quiz score, it's got the completion date, um, and then the completion time for his courses. And you could search again within this as well. So again, for any of these, I could, I could click down into them. And uh, let's go ahead and do that. And let's see how uh, Arthur did on this particular course. So what I've done here is drill down again. Now we're at the course and user combination. So we've drilled down further and are seeing this particular user's details for this particular course. So here's my list of available lessons. And you can see that this one is not complete. And it's always a little tricky to set up the, the um, test environments for courses. Um, so it is showing as 100% complete because this one was added later. Um, LearnDash doesn't reset the progress and we look at LearnDash for that. So that's why that is showing as not complete in case it seems inconsistent. So anyway, we can see uh, the records for this user uh, for the different lessons and then topics again. We can see that if there are any quizzes, we can see uh, the scores for the quizzes. Uh, this one doesn't have assignments. We didn't set that up for this particular user. Again, it's all test data, but if there were assignments from this user, they would show up here. And then we can also look at any tin can data that uh, the user has been through here. So um, again, it's, it's showing you know, where this was, what module it was. So this is coming from um, the, the actual module itself. In this cap case, it was a Captivate file. Um, and the, the project name was uh, Test Captivate Project. Um, when we authored that with, uh, with Captivate, um, this is reading from the XML file. So it would do the same thing for Storyline files. Um, when they're uploaded, it would parse the XML and look for how things are named. And then, of course, it's got the, the verb there for the uh, tin can or XAPI. Um, so it's got that information there. And then if there was any kind of score or something, um, like sometimes the score would be sent, that would be here. So if it was uh, quiz related, then there would be a score here. And then, of course, we've got that information here. So um, again, there's, there's a lot of information for this user. And if I wanted to just see like the slides that were called slide, something then I can search that way and it's instant and it's showing me the results for those so you can see that it's 22 entries of the 39 available so that covers the learn dash side of the reporting as well as some of the tin can details at a basic level for individual users but uh, where things get more interesting with uh, tin can is with the the tin can report so this is another tab. This one does tend to have a lot of data, like tin can modules can generate a lot of statements. So we have to be careful about how we retrieve that data. And what we've done is made it so that you can only retrieve data after applying some kind of filter. 
um, just because we don't want to bog down the system too much and we want to only retrieve what we actually need. So for this demo, I'm just going to uh, filter it by uh, Learn Dash Group. So we set up two Learn Dash Groups um, in the system, just as samples. And you can see it, it would normally retrieve the list of courses. Um, and with, within those, we could uh, filter by modules within those. So if I went to, I, I'm actually not sure where, uh, which courses I better not, because I'm not sure which courses have uh, storyline modules in them. Um, so I'm going to leave that open. If I wanted to filter by verb or action, then I could do that here as well. And if I wanted to filter by date, I could do that too. So let's go ahead and search. Um, that can it can take a second. So in, in that case, it was really fast there. But if you have a large amount of data, it can take a couple of seconds. Um, so here's the the data that's been retrieved. You can see it is still a lot of records, and of course, you're not going to want to filter through or sort through, navigate through um, 2,300 pages of this data. Um, so again, for these kinds of things, you might want to filter further, uh, maybe by specific user or uh, maybe by you know verb or by date because it is a lot of information to go through but you can see it is all there it is tracked as users go through it um, so in this case this was an h5p module and you can see that all of these things are hyperlinked um, if you need to drill down to get more information so like right now this is linked to the the course if i wanted to see where this is coming from uh, then i could click on that and it would show me that actual H5P module if I wanted to see how that was uh, set up. Um, and so that is the information there. And again, we can um, filter these or sort these things, filter uh, these things. So I, I just did that. Um, the, this one does refresh the page because it is a large number of records. So it's, it's loading them as they're needed. But what I wanted to do here, um, Let's do a search by Alan there. Okay, so this is a much more manageable set of records. So now uh, in group A for users with Alan in their name, now I have a list of what's been done there. Um, maybe I just want to see too which quizzes the user has passed. And uh, within that, the results within it. So you can see that in group A, user Alan within that um, passed this, the quiz that's in here, um, and scored 100% on those quizzes. So, and then we've got the date, of course, here as well. We will be making some additional screencasts and videos available in the knowledge base to talk through other topics and go into more detail about things like how to use the individual reports, um, as well as the tin can ones and also talk through how to set up your tin can modules so your modules from storyline and captivate and h5p so that they will talk to um, the lrs that's essentially built into wordpress with the plugin so that every statement is captured so stay tuned for other videos and uh, we hope this one was helpful